Association proudly presents another championship event. Your network hosts are Country Companies Insurance and the nearly 1,000 Country Companies agents in Illinois. And DeKalb Ag Research and the more than 750 local DeKalb dealers supplying Illinois farmers with quality hybrid seeds. to Palatine in the 1981 Girls Gymnastics Finals of the Illinois High School Association. I'm Rebecca Paul and with me is Kathy Krebs. Kathy, competition's close after preliminaries. Who should we look for in tonight's competition? Well, I think the competition is going to be very close between Deanna Schwartz and Nina Jim. Both of them have uh, extensive background in gymnastics. Deanna Schwartz won the all-around competition after the preliminaries, but Nina Jim is a tough competitor and I think she's going to come back and give of Deanna a very tough time tonight. What about the team competition? Addison Trail leads by only three points after the preliminaries. They have an awful lot of depth, don't they? They're extremely, uh, they have a lot of depth on their team. All their kids are very clean in their routines. They don't have one gymnast that's very flashy or outstanding like a Nina Jim or Deanna Schwartz, but they all have very strong routines. But right behind Addison Trail is York High School, and that's where Deanna Schwartz comes from. Maine East is right in there, and so is Morton East. Well, we'll be back with the first competition in just a moment. One of your network sponsors is DeKalb Ag Research. You can depend on Otto when the family's away. Illinois Girls High School Gymnastics Championship following Olympic rotation. The first event will be vault. First up is Mara Godstead. Kathy, what vault is she doing? Mara will do a Tuck Sukahara vault. We'll see it in slow motion here. Or has slight separation on her legs in the pre-flight, has fairly good rotation on the post-flight, but lands in a bent over position, which will probably cost her a couple of tenths. Now, up now is Aline Robinson from Addison Trail, doing the same vault, right? Correct. Aline performed the vault a little more cleanly than Maura did. As you can see on the, the replay, she doesn't have the leg separation in the beginning that Maura had. Smaller one, has a little bit harder repulsion off the horse, and lands in a more upright position. Next up, we have Deanna Schwartz from York High School. Deanna does a half on full off vault, vault that we haven't seen yet, and a vault we probably won't see very frequently this evening. One thing about Deanna, she's very clean, very few mechanical errors in what she does. No leg separation, pointed toes, stretch body. No major body breaks. Now, Nita Jim from Forest View High School. Is going to do a Sukahara in a pike position. Pike position is different from tuck in that the legs have to be straight, but the body is bent in the middle, forming more of an L shape in the body. She has a major leg separation on the pre flight. Very little else is wrong with the ball. She lands in an upright position. Didn't take any steps after she landed. Here's Lisa Wax from Maine East High School. Lisa does a handspring pull. Clean vault, little flat on the post flight side, which is the side after the horse. Now you'll see marked up there whether it's the girl's first vault or second vault. Each girl has a choice of doing two vaults. Lisa was the only girl who chose to do just one vault. Here we have Lisa Dabrowski. Lisa does a half on, full off, and has major technical errors in the beginning and at the end. Fairly clean vault, though she manages to cover it up fairly well at the end. Debbie Leone. Tuck Souk. Need a little bit more height on her Souk. You get height from pushing off the horse right there at that position. And that's one reason why she landed in a more bent over position. Plus, she wasn't in a very tight tuck. Here we have Julie Winzins... Winski. Winski. Another Sukahara there. All the girls...
girls seem to be having a little bit of a leg separation on their pre-flight side, so they're basically being deducted probably one to two tenths for that leg separation. Chris Cotton does a Pike Sukahara. Very clean vault. Nice and tight in the beginning, nice height. And a fairly straight landing. What did her coach spray on her hand there? Uh, probably something called firm grip. If the horse is a little slick, which is made out of a synthetic leather, she probably put a little firm grip on her hands so their hands would not slip when she hits the horse. We'll see her vault in slow motion here. Melanie wait. Melanie's a little bit more compact gymnast, so she won't seem to go as high or as far as the other gymnasts. Barb caused her to under-rotate. Barb did not push off the horse at all, and as a consequence, did not have enough time to get her body in a nice tucked position, as we'll see right here. She bends her arms quite a bit, and she's got an open position, doesn't have time to complete the vault before she lands. Here we have our awards presentation. Coming in fourth in the vault were Godstead and Robinson. Tying for second, Schwartz and Jem. Our first place winner, Lisa Wax, from Maine East High School. Let's do an interview with Lisa. I'm with Lisa Wax, the 1981 vaulting champion. Congratulations, Lisa. You're the only girl who did only one vault. You didn't opt to do your second vault. Why? Um, I do one vault in the gym, and that's the one that usually scores, and I don't usually need another. I do another one if I don't hit the first one. Well, you did do the very nicely. Last year, Lisa placed eighth in the vaulting championship. How did you improve so much? Was this the same ball? It was the same one. I just worked harder. I, I think maybe I'm a little stronger this year, and that helps. Well, good luck in the rest of the events, and congratulations on this Thank one. You. Pause for this message. One of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. Kathy, what are some of the things the judges are going to be looking for in Janice's routine? Well, under composition, the gymnast must show swinging moves, quick and light grip exchange from one bar to the other, movement around both bars and in both directions, regrasps on the same bar, and the routine should be approximately 8 to 12 moves. Nice heck with a full twist dismount. Janice is a senior, so that's the last time she'll compete for Niles West on the uneven bars. Janice has a fairly compact routine in that she has a nice tight body. Small leg separation on the skill that she did there and just prior to that. But overall, fairly clean routine. Robinson from Addison Trail High School. Alina's a senior also. And a good all-round competitor. Alina's one of the mainstays of the Addison Trail team. She seems to have nice flexibility there. I think we'll notice throughout the competition that Addison Trail has fairly clean routines. We might not see the big flashy tricks, but they rarely make a mistake in what they do. That's why they're right on top coming out of the preliminary competition into this evening's competition. This is the beginning of Aline's routine into a front summy, drop down, glide, kip, catch the high bar. Kip to the high bar, soul circle, half turn, the feet full twist. And we saw Janice do that same move. Janice had a slight leg separation, so uh, as you saw, Eileen, I think, did it a little more cleanly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Karen Glad, also from Addison Trails High School. That was an interesting mount. Difficult? But, but rather difficult because and you're going over the bar backwards. But you have the aid of the ruther board, so that does help a little bit. A 
again, another very nice clean routine from one of the Addison Trail girls. There are a couple of skills that Karen lacked a little bit of extension, but overall a very nice routine. Let's look at that mount again. You notice she doesn't use her hands until she's cleared the bar, has done her half turn, and is on the way down underneath the low bar. Excellent form, but that's the point right there that I was talking about on the extension. On her cast, she probably could have casted her legs a little straighter up behind her before she placed her feet on the bars. Karen Glad. Deanna Schwartz, who was leading in the, who, who won the all-around competition in the preliminaries. Has a very interesting routine. A few more flashy tricks that really catch your eye. Well, she did her front summy with a half turn as opposed to a plain front summy which we'd seen some of the other girls do. The torn funnel. Dana's only a freshman, so I'm sure we'll see a lot of her in the years to come. How difficult was that dismount? The dismount is difficult in that you have to be able to know exactly how far you hold on to the bar before you let go with your hands and your feet and begin the somersault. If you let go too early, you don't have the height in order to complete the rotation on the somersault. A nice routine. Nina Jem, up next from Forest View High School. Nina fulfills all of the requirements. She changes the, uh, from one bar to the next bar continuously. Changes directions continuously. been a, a top competitor for a couple of years, hasn't she? Yes, this is her second year in high school competition. She's a junior, and last year she won the all-around competition. So I think this evening she's feeling a little under the gun. She really feels like she's got to perform up to what people expect her to perform up to. But she's really hitting here on bars. Everything's going quite smoothly. No major breaks at all. Small little break there at the very end on direction and, and uh, form, but a very clean routine. Our winners on bars are Greer Robinson, Glad Schwartz, and in first place, Nina Jem from Forest View. We'll be back with more exciting competition from the 1981 Illinois Girls Gymnastics State Meet, but first of all, one of your network sponsors is DeKalb Ag first competitor is Mary Ann Pedrigo from Glenbard North High School. Kathy, tell us some of the things the judges will be looking for in this particular competition. Under the area of composition, again, the gymnasts must show exercises of balance, both standing on their feet and inverted so that they're on their hands. Turns both small and large, jumps and leaps with height, some running movements, large sweeping movements, dance, and of course, as we're seeing right now, tumbling combinations, where they make the balance beam look just like they're tumbling on the floor exercise mat. Now, the beam is only, what, about four inches wide? Correct. Marianne's having a little bit of trouble getting started here in this routine, but her beginning was very solid. Just a little bobble there at the end of that skill. But that it was a relatively difficult skill, wasn't it, combining two moves? Yes. Um, I'd say maybe a year or so ago, two years ago, we'd say that was a really spectacular skill. <laughs> and now it's very common in every day. The, the level of skill that the gymnasts have to show to be in this meet has really increased. And a skill like that now is just an average skill. Here we 
you see uh, Mary Ann's back handspring coming out of a cartwheel back handspring where she fell off the beam. Kathy, what caused her to fall? She had um, uh, her legs a little bit over her head on her back handspring, which caused her to pull her body off to the side. And when she came down on her feet, of course, the center of gravity was off to the side, so she fell. This is coming into her dismount, cartwheel, back with a full off the end. Not many girls are doing fulls off the end of the beam. Deanna Schwartz, York High School. Difficult mount. Very difficult. Jump to a handstand, pirouette. If you miss on your jump, of course you're going to miss the rest of the skill. Deanna seems to have a little bit of problem keeping her balance right there. But Deanna's a seasoned competitor, and, and if you watch this routine very closely, she makes everything look very effortless. You don't really realize that she's on a balance beam, other than those little bobbles at the beginning. Everything else looks like that beam was made just for her, except for that. <laughs> Like Deanne has probably had some dance training too, which obviously is going to help on both beam and floor exercise. Well, dance training is very important, as you just noted, on beam and floor. And because beam uh, has to combine tumbling and dance, it's essential that you show some dance. I think that shows the maturity of the gymnast. Any gymnast could probably get out there and do a lot of skills. But you have to combine the dance with the skills to make it an interesting routine. Now, during the preliminary competition, did she do a full off the beam? Gee, I couldn't tell you. She had a full um, prepared for this evening, but she does have a few problems like we saw right there. And she might have just decided to play it safe and not do the full for fear that uh, she wouldn't really make it around. And we have to remember that Deanna has not been feeling well. She was very ill yesterday during the prelims. So she just might be playing it safe and knowing that uh, she can complete the back off better than the full. Here we have Laura Hicks from Morton East High School, a press into a handstand mount. How does that compare in difficulty with Deanna's mount, her jump into her handstand? Well, Deanna did a pirouette out, which means that mm -hmm. she turned her full body around. Laura's a press is very difficult, especially the way she did. She just went right up there and jumped off the mat. I would say the two have to be fairly comparable in difficulty. Nice standing back. And Laura is only a freshman. She has some very difficult skills in her routine. Back into two flip-flops is a very difficult combination. Now she looks like a very petite child, young lady. How important is that to these girls who are competing, to be tiny? Well, the smaller you are, it's the easier it is to do certain skills. I think if you look at international competition, you'll notice that a majority of the girls are very young, or if you've read in the papers their ages, they are very young. However, internationally now, they've made a rule that this year, the gymnast has to be 15 in order to enter international competition. And I think that's to uh, also show off the maturity of the gymnast. Now here we're working with high school age girls ranging from 14 through 18. And um, they're the right size as far as I'm concerned. They're not too large, not too small. And they're, they're up to the maturity level that's pretty in dance. Now here's Laura's mount again. Pressing into that nice straight handstand. Here we have Jackie Ortman from Addison Trail, our team leader at this moment. Jackie does a handstand that time from the side, similar to Laura's, only she uses a board, which made it a little easier for Jackie to get up into the handstand. Not to take anything away from that mount because it's a very difficult difficult one then to control if you use the board. Each time
time we see a little bobble by the gymnast where their body moves back and forth, the judges are deducting probably one-tenth, depending on how major the bobble is. If the bobble is very slight, they might even deduct five-hundredths of a point instead of five-tenths. Or one to five-tenths, I should say. Five would be more like a fall. routine for Jackie, who is a sophomore at Addison. Her coach, Fred Dennis. Here we see her getting ready for her dismount. She's going to go into a back walkover. Pause for just a second and then do her back handspring back. Does that pause hurt her as far as the judge's scoring is concerned? No, because her body is moving continuously. However, if I'm sure most judges are watching for continuous movement throughout the routines. Nina Jim? Nina's a junior this year at Arlington Heights. She had a preliminary score of 8.55. You don't see tours you tase done too often on the beam, which we just saw Nina do. Is that more difficult than a plane leap? Yes, quite difficult because you are taking off going in one direction, you're rotating your body around into another direction, plus you're switching legs. One leg that you took off on will now become the leg that you land on. This is the event Nina had a little bit of difficulty with during prelims, getting started into her routine. And she's really moving along nicely tonight. seemed to like that one too. Getting ready for her dismount. This is the Tertia Tay that we were talking about, where she takes off going in one direction and lands in the other and switches legs. And she has height. And that is referred to as amplitude in gymnastics, and all judges are looking for amplitude, especially in a skill like the switch leap that she just did. We want to see the higher, the better. She, too, makes it look like the beam was made for her. Could have done that for an aerial on the floor. Nina has some very interesting dance. Here's her routine isn't composed primarily of just skills. It has a nice balance between tumbling and dance. We're ready for the awards in balance beam. Padrigo was in fifth, Schwartz in fourth, Hicks and Ortman tied for second, and Nina Jem, with that routine we just saw, won the balance beam competition. Congratulations to all of those girls. We'll be back. But first of all, a word from one of your network sponsors, Country Companies Insurance. The 1981 IHSA Girls Gymnastic State Finals. In case you're, you've just joined us, I'm Rebecca Paul, and with me is Kathy Krebs. Kathy, exciting competition. Very exciting. Uh, what we're seeing right now is a judges conference, and the four judges are discussing the first routine on each event which happened before each event which we did not see until right now and they're arriving at the base score and some of the things that they're looking for on their score sheets which you can see in their hands right now they have to have a certain difficulty level in their routines in other words they must have four medium level skills or those are more average type skills and they're each worth three tenths of a point and then three superior skills were six tenths of a point to make three points up of their ten points total. Composition is five tenths of a point. Originality and value of combinations is 1.5. Execution and amplitude 4.0 and general impression 1.0. We're ready now for floor exercise. Our first competitor is Sandy Thompson.
important. Uh, a girl that is older, say 17, would not want to pick a very young at heart, let's say, type of music such as Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, something in that category, because it would not be befitting her age and maturity level in her dance. And on the other hand, a very small young girl would not want to pick something very side because that would not be fitting of her body type. Sandy goes to Morton East and has done a very nice routine. She did a cartwheel full twisting flip-flop in here. Let's look at that in slow motion. How difficult is that, Kathy? Very difficult because she's going into that blind. She has to, by blind I mean she doesn't see where she's going and she has to be right on, otherwise she'll go past hitting her hands. That was a double full, first one we've seen today. This is Jennifer Bretz from Rich Central High School and a freshman. And here we can see a contrast in the styles and the music from Sandy's music. Jennifer's is a younger girl and really would not want to select anything too dramatic. Her music seems to fit her quite well. We talked a little bit on bars and beam about the elements the judges were looking for. What are they looking for in floor exercise? Floor exercise must have tumbling combinations, elements of dance, Flexibilities, aerials, that is, things without their hands, jumps and suspended leaps, small and large turns, and as you can see, they have to cover the entire floor exercise area. That was a nice routine by Jennifer. I think this should be her double full at the beginning. That's a, a very difficult move, isn't it? Very difficult, and I think we're going to see several of those in today's competition. She doesn't quite make it all the way around, does she? No, and she has a little bit of a problem with the mechanics of the skill. But a nice high tumbler for the height of that Jennifer has, she takes everything up quite high. Next competitor, Nora Kirk. Nora Kirk from Skokie, Niles North. We have four judges in the competition on each event this evening. One is the superior judge who controls the event and looks at all of the score sheets as they come in, and then three acting judges. And behind the superior judge is the meet referee who supervises and makes sure that all rules are applied correctly and that the judges aren't scoring too high or too low or being inconsistent in their judgment. Nora is a senior and uh, a little taller girl than some of the other gymnasts and has picked a little more classical music for our conversation mm -hmm. a little earlier. And is an excellent dancer. He uses her body quite extensively. A nice long legs, very pretty body line. It's a little more difficult to tumble, though, doesn't it, with those long legs? In some instances, but I think you can you really get the full effect of the skill from taller gymnasts from, than from shorter gymnasts, because when you watch a short gymnast, the skill goes so fast, you can't really get the full effect of it. Right there is a perfect example of how her legs helped her. She really had a lot of height on an aerial cartwheel and covered a little bit of distance to help her get back into the corner. And a nice full twisting back somersault to end her routine. We're up with Jennifer Jacob, Glenbrook North High School. Jennifer's a sophomore. come into the superior judge, Becky, the high and the low score are thrown out, and the two middle scores are averaged together to make the score that we see at the completion of the routine. And that's not quite all in, in judging. Their score 
powers must be within a specific range. In other words, if a superior judge's score is between 9.5 and 10.0, the two middle scores may not be farther apart than two tenths of a point. I just saw Jennifer do a nice handspring front there. She got lots of height when she did her front somersault in the air. Tumbling probably is the hardest tumbling to learn because you don't have quite the same momentum and control as you do when you're going backwards. Jennifer Jacob from Glenbrook South. We'll look at her handspring front, I think, here in slow motion when we were talking about front tumbling. Now she bounces right out of this front summy in, heads another direction for a front aerial. Is that more difficult? Well, I think she came out of her front semi a little on the crooked side, although that's her floor pattern to go to the side, but it just so happened it, she came out and headed toward the side probably a little earlier than she would have, have liked to. We're up with Wendy Speck from Hershey High School, also a sophomore. Wendy has some very difficult tumbling in her routine a lot of personality. This is what the judge really likes to see. The gym is really getting involved with their music and their routine. You can see there a little variation in speed, which I think was one of the elements you mentioned need to be able to go fast and slow. Their fast things usually happen to be tumbling items, although there is some fast dance, and slow items happen to usually be uh, aerial movements like cartwheels or walkovers and dance and leaps. This looks like a pretty exhilarating routine. Wendy should be pretty tired when she's through this. Routine. I think Wendy enjoyed that as much as we did watching her perform it. This is Wendy's double full, or plain full, sorry, that we're going to see her double full. She has a lot of height and is a clean performer. Aline Robinson, who we have seen compete in some of the other events this evening from Addison Trail. of dance styles I think we'll see from Wendy Speck's routine. She seems to move her upper body well. Coming from dance training maybe? Yes. The gymnast should show supple body movements. That involves upper torso movements also other than just their legs and their arms. ending to a good high school career. And a very nice score also, 9.1, a well-deserved score. Handstand pirouette. Elaine shows good amplitude on everything she does, and that's what I was talking about earlier, stretching the body, showing the ultimate, the maximum for each thing. Deanna Schwartz from York High School in Elmhurst. This is our all-around winner. And only a freshman. York is also doing well in the team competition. Yes, they've moved up from the preliminary competition. This is another double fall, which we talked about earlier. A little falter on our landing.
gymnast. Boy, frightful. She's a seasoned competitor. She's competed prior to high school. And this is not a particularly difficult meet for her. She's been in very difficult meets and under a lot of pressure before, so she knows how to handle the pressure. Although I know Deanna's very excited about being here today. She has very few flaws in her performance. Most of the girls who we've seen do double fulls have ended with a single full. Are they worn out? Fairly worn out. In fact, some of them um, probably have placed their full at the end in the routine for today's competition rather than probably before today because it is a very difficult thing to do at the end and this competition right here is going to determine the winner so they have to go all out whether they're tired or not they want to put everything in they know to show that they are the best gymnast now that was deanna's double fall which she did as her first pass here we'll see another move of deanna's routine in slow motion Has good extension and everything. This is a round off and a flip flop into a full twisting back. And that was done at the end of her routine. And with a small leg separation that probably cost her one tenth of a point. Nina Gem, our last competitor of the evening in floor exercise, Forest View High School. off the evening let's, let's watch Nina in slow motion replay here I think this is her first opening pass a double full she stumbles a little as she comes out of it what do you think causes this Kathy well she's landing a little short or rather her legs came under her a little bit quicker than she thought and as a result she had a lot of momentum going backwards she had to take one step backwards to get her self back on track so she could then go forward again here's this middle tumbling pass we were talking about being so high arabian a back with a half twist correct into a round off tuck back somersault and that takes a lot of stamina right there to go forward and then convert your momentum into backward momentum a nice event for all of the young ladies Tying for fifth were Thompson, Bretts, Kirk, and Jacob. Close competition in fourth place, Wendy Speck. Third, Robinson. Fourth, Schwartz. And our winner in floor exercise, Nina Jem. We'll be back to Nina a little bit about tonight's competition. But first of all, one of your network sponsors is DeKalb. 
I'm with the 1981 girls gymnastics champion in bars, beam, and floor exercise. Congratulations, Nina Jem. Thank you. You were the all-around champion last year. Did that give you any added pressure for this year's competition? Oh, I'd say um, a lot of people would come up to me and say, you can do it again this year, you can do it again this year. And just with all these people saying that to me, I felt like, oh my God, I gotta do it. And I felt if I didn't do it, I'd disappoint a lot of people, especially myself. Well, you certainly did do well in today's competition. Were there any added elements in any of your three, three routines over last year's routines? Um, on my bars, I added a handstand, which I didn't have last year, which helped me to win bars. In, beam routine, in my beam routine, there was no added elements. It was just the same routine. My floor was basically the same, just a few dance changes. Yesterday, you balked right before you started to mount the beam. Was that in your mind tonight when you did your beam routine at all? No, all the pressure was off for all around. I didn't really care how the individual events ended up, so that was that. <laughs> well, congratulations. You had a fine year again this year. We look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you. Next, we'll have the presentation of the all-around awards, which is the average of the girls' scores from the four events from preliminary competition. But first, a very special award for Karen Glad. Senior Gymnast of the Year and was voted as the outstanding senior by the coaches from the Illinois High School Coaches Association. It is based on several criteria, several of which are coachability, scholastic standing, leadership on the team, and her gymnastic accomplishments. Obviously, she did well as far as gymnastics accomplishment is accomplishments are concerned she tied for fourth in the all-around competition I think that is again we should point out from yesterday's scores tying with her for fourth was Lisa Wax who's a senior from Maine East we see Lisa here coming now to receive her medal Lisa's a senior and finished off her high school career on a very fine note. I'm sure she's proud of what she did today. Coming in third in the all-around competition from Addison Trail, Aline Robinson, another senior. Aline is just another one of those gymnasts from Addison Trail that has fine technique has been the mainstay of their program for several several years and allowed them to win several state championships. Well, we've had three seniors in a tie for fourth and third. Now we're coming to the youngsters. Nina Jem came in second as a junior from uh, Forest View High School, Arlington Heights. Nina was upset in the preliminary competition for the all-around title. Bounced back well, though, for the individual titles, obviously. Our winner is just a freshman, York High School in Elmhurst, Deanna Schwartz. Exciting meet for a young lady. Very exciting. You can see that she's very excited at winning the all-around title. I think it's interesting it was a great accomplishment for Deanna. Deanna. They didn't feel that she did as well or thought that she could do as well, but really did an outstanding like job. We'll have a real interesting competition next year. These are the five top all-around performers in the state of Illinois for 1981. the 1981 all-around champion for girls gymnastics in the state of Illinois. Congratulations. Thank you. You're a very sick young lady. You had a 102 degree temperature during the preliminary? Yes, I did. How are you feeling now? I feel much better because I went to the doctor and he told me what to do, so I feel better. Did it affect any of your performances? Um, no, it really didn't. I thought it was going to, but it didn't at all. You're not at all weak from such a high fever. I thought I was going to be. I was a little dizzy at first, but with the adrenaline flowing, and it just, it really doesn't matter. How old were you when you started gymnastics? I started competing when I was nine. Well, only being a freshman, did that cause any added pressures for today's competition? No, I don't think it did. Uh, well, congratulations. We look forward to seeing lots more of you in the next three years. Deanna Schwartz, thank you. Team awards, excitement for the evening. In third place, Morton East. In second place, place York High School. And the winners, Addison Trail. I'm with the 1981 team champions, Addison Trail, and their captain, Dawn. Dawn, this is the fourth year in a row you've won the team championship. Yes, it is. How many of you are seniors? There's four of us. 
Does that mean the end of the Addison Trail dynasty in girls' no, gymnastics? No, not at all. Not at all. We have a lot of youngsters coming up. Congratulations. What is the role of a team captain? Helping all the girls out, accepting state trophies, making little speeches, just mostly helping everybody out. How many of you plan to go to college and, and compete in gymnastics, all of you seniors? All of you. Well, good luck in college. Congratulations once more for winning the 1981 Girls High School Gymnastics Championship. Thank you. One of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. The close of the 1981 Illinois Girls High School Gymnastics Competition. Kathy, we're having the opportunity to see some of the other competitors into today's competition. While we're doing that, tell me who some of the people are who made this meet possible. We'd like to thank the Illinois High School Association and Ola Bundy, its Assistant Executive Secretary, Mr. Neuendorp, Principal at Palatine High School, and his staff, Chick Anderson, the Athletic Director, Sandy Oldham, Meet Director and Head Coach at Palatine, Sherry Wilcox, the Assistant Coach, and of course the judges, Meet Referee Elizabeth Maher, Judges Fern Brooker, Priscilla Gilroy, Debbie Greenlee, Pam Nicole, Judy Matz, Sandy Miller, Millie Shimlick, and Janet Walkholtz. Kathy, you've been the Illinois High School Association Rule Interpreter for five years now. How do you see Illinois High School Gymnastics Competition progressing in those five years? The progression of high school gymnastics is something that's very hard to, to see in that it's multiplied. The difficulty is something that wasn't imaginable at the beginning five years ago. We were very excited just to have a meet five years ago, and here we are waiting to see the type of difficulties and be able maybe to compare them to some of the more well-known national gymnasts that we might see on television. You've watched the 1981 season from its beginning. Is this how you expected it to end? Fairly much so. I think Edison Trail was always the, the leader in contention. They always had extremely large leads over any other scores they met during the du dual meet season. However, on the all-around level and the individual medal winners, I think that was up for grabs. It was up for grabs right from the very beginning as soon as we knew who some of the individual competitors would be with Deanna Schwartz and Deanna uh, or Nina Jem. And of course, one gymnast that we didn't see this evening, Marianne Kostinik, who was a top gymnast last year but was injured earlier this season. We only have a few seconds left. What do you see for next year with Addison's Trails girls graduating? I see an open ball game next year. I think uh, any team could come in and, and capture the championship next year. And if Addison were to stay on top, they would have to really do some big things. Kathy Krebs, thanks very much for joining me in today's competition. Thank you for joining me. I'm Rebecca Paul. Have a nice day. been watching another Illinois High School Association championship event. Your network hosts have been DeKalb Ag Research and the more than 750 local DeKalb dealers supplying Illinois farmers with quality hybrid seed. And Country Companies Insurance and the nearly 1,000 Country Companies agents in the state of Illinois.